Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code. This is called Valid Sudoku. If you've ever done Sudoku, you probably already know the rules of whether or not a board is valid. So basically we want to determine if a nine by nine Sudoku board is valid. Only the filled cells need to be validated according to the following rules. Number one, each row must contain digits one through nine without repetition. Two, each column must contain the digits one through nine without repetition. And three, each of the nine three by three sub blocks of the grid must also contain digits one through nine without repetition. And a note, a Sudoku board partially filled could be valid, but is not necessarily solvable. Only the filled cells need to be validated according to the mentioned rules. So any empty cell we're not gonna care about, we only want to validate the numbers that are currently present in the board. So example one, this is our Sudoku board. We have the rows going across, the columns going down, and our three by three sub boxes in our grid. Is this a valid Sudoku board? In order to do this, we wanna go through every single column and see if the numbers one through nine have repeated at all. So in any of these columns, we can have no repetitions. Same with the rows, no repetitions between one to nine in any of these rows. If we find even a single repetition, we output false. So the rows and columns have no repeats. And if you look at the three by three grids by themselves, you're gonna see that there's no repeat in here as well. So we are going to output true. Example two, this is our board. We wanna make sure all of our numbers are unique in every row, in every column, and in every box. So this first row looks okay. This first column is not okay because we have an eight up here, but we also have an eight in that same column. And if we looked at this box as well, there's also a repetition of eight in this. So it's not going to be valid. And so we output false. And we have our constraints over here. We have a nine by nine board and every cell is either going to be digit one through nine or it's going to be empty. Basically, it's going to be marked with just a period. Okay, so how are we going to solve this? Well, this question is actually pretty straightforward. We just wanna make sure we have unique values across every single row, down every column, and through every single box. In order to do this, what are we going to use? What data structure is good at maintaining unique values? That's going to be a set. So we're gonna basically be initializing a set for every row, column, and sub box. Say we have the following input example, we have our columns going down, right? Index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're just gonna initialize an empty set for every single column. We're gonna do the same exact thing for our rows. Keep a set for row zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we wanna do the same thing for our grid. So say we use the same numbering pattern for our sub boxes. We have box zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, the only little part that we need to think about is how we're actually going to assign every single cell to a particular sub box. Well, let's think about this, right? We know we want to divide our boxes into threes going across and going down. So first thinking about going across, right? If we look at row zero, we have indices for our columns going zero to eight. If we want to separate this into threes, what we can do is just integer divide by three, right? Zero to two, anything in this range, integer divided by three would be zero. Three to five, integer dividing that by three would be one. Three goes into three once, three goes into four once, three also goes into five just once. So everything here would be one. And six to eight, integer dividing that by three would be two. So anything in here would be two. So basically we have our board sort of split into thirds right now, right? We have zero, one, and two, but we actually wanted nine boxes in total. This box alone should have been zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. So how do we actually do this? Well, if you notice, right, this is going to be zero, one, two. This is also just zero, one, two offset by three. If we add three to zero, we get three. Add three to one, we get four. Add three to two, we get five. So we can make the same divisions across our rows as well. If we were to integer divide zero, one, two by three, we would get zero. So we're not offsetting this by anything over here. But if we were to integer divide three, four, five by three, we would get one. So there's gonna be one offset of three for these boxes. 
So basically, we're going to take whatever row index we have, integer divide that by 3, and then multiply that number by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. So we're going to be offsetting these cells by 3. Now, if we do the same thing for our last row over here, right, 6, 7, 8, integer dividing that by 3 is going to give us 2. And we just want to multiply that by 3, so we're going to get 6, and that is the offset we're going to use. So this plus the column integer divided by 3 is going to represent what cell we're on, right? This entire thing is going to be 6. 6 plus 0, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 2 is going to mark the cell we're at. And that's all we really need to do in order to keep track of what row, column, and grid we're in. So now let's actually go and initialize our sets. So rows is going to be the empty set for every index that we have in rows. So 4 x in range 9. Same with our columns. It's going to be the empty set in range 9. And same with our grids. So grid is going to be set for the empty in range 9. So we have a set for every row, every column, and every grid. Now all we need to do is loop through every single cell. So four row in range nine, four column in range nine. We want to get the number that we have at that cell. So the number is going to equal board of that row column index that we are using. Now we have one of two options. That number could be one through nine, be a digit, or it could be a dot, in which case we don't really need to check anything. So if number equals the period, we continue out of our for loop. Now, if you've never seen a continue, all it does is it stops wherever we are in our for loop, skipping the lines below us and just goes back continuing with the for loop. So if we have a period, we don't need to do anything. We're just going to go on to our next cell. If it's not a period, if it is a number, we want to make sure it's unique across all three criteria. So if number in rows of our row or number in columns of the column we're on or number in the grid we're on. And again, how do we find the grid index that we have? It's going to come by doing a row integer divided by three. We want to offset this. So we're going to multiply this by three and add this to our column integer divided by three. So if this number already exists in that box, that number is in so or number in grid of grid index we return false we've seen a repeat we can return false right away if that's not the case then we're actually going to take our number and add it in to the set for the rows the columns and the grid so rows of row dot add this number columns of column dot add number and grid of grid index dot add number and if we finish looping through everything without returning false, that means we've never seen a repeat and we can actually return true. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity, for space, we are keeping track of a set for every single row, column, and grid. But we are constrained, right? We know for a fact we are given a 9x9 nine nine Sudoku board. So this is actually going to be constant O of 1. We're only ever going to have nine sets for our rows, nine for a column, and nine for our grid. It's never going to exceed that no matter what input we get. So it's going to be constant for space. And you could argue the same thing for time, right? We're only going through 81 cells in total. So this is also going to be constant and doesn't depend on how our input differs. We're always going to have to traverse those 81 cells at a max. So our time is also going to be constant O of now, before leaving, let's just do a super quick example walkthrough just to see how our code is going to run line by line. For our example, say this is our input Sudoku board. We have our columns going down this way. I've labeled them so it's easier to read, 0 through 8. Same with the rows, 0 to 8 going across, and our boxes, 0 to 8 as well. So going through this line by line, the first thing we want to do is initialize sets, nine sets for rows, columns, and our grid. So this is going to look like the following, right? We have a list of empty sets, nine of them in our rows list, the same thing for column and same thing for our grid. Now going in this for loop, four row in range nine, four column in range nine, the row is gonna start off with index zero and column is also gonna start off at index zero. 
Now, what number do we have at index zero, zero in our board? Well, that number is one over here. So our number is one. We make a check if number equals period, we continue. That's not true. So we're not going to go in this if condition. And instead, we're going to find out what grid index we're on. So our grid index is going to be row integer divided by three times three. Our row is zero. So zero integer divided by three is zero. Multiplying that by three is still going to be zero. And to that, we're going to add column integer divided by three. Column is also zero. So to that, we're just going to add zero. Basically, our grid index is going to be zero. We're at this first box over here. And we just want to check if this number exists in our row index, column index, or grid index. So if number, if one in rows of row, row is zero. So rows of index zero is this set over here. One does not exist here. And num also does not exist in our zero with column index or our zero with grid index. So we don't return false. Instead, we're just going to add our number one to our rows of zero, columns of index zero, and grid of index zero. So all these sets just have the number one so far. Now going back in this for loop, we go up to column index one. So what is number at this index over here? It is a period. And we do go in this if condition, right? Number is a period. So we just continue out of this and move up our column index. At this cell, what is our number? So at zero, two, it's going to be two. It's not a period, so we don't continue. What is our grid index? Zero integer divided by three is zero. Multiplying that by three is still zero. And column integer divided by three. So two integer divided by three is also zero. So our grid index remains zero. Now we want to check if two exists in the row, column, or grid. So, so far, two does not exist in our row right over here. It does not exist in our second column right over here. And it also doesn't exist in our grid. Only one exists there. So we don't return false. Instead, we update our sets. So rows of zero is going to have two. Column of index two is going to have a two. And grid of index zero is also going to have a two. Going back in this for loop, we are at cell zero three, but this is a period. So we know we're going to continue and go on to the next index. So we get over here, same thing, move on. Here again, there's no number, we move on. Now over here, we do have a number, right? That number is six. So we're going to see what our grid index is over here. Row is still zero, so zero integer divided by three is zero. Multiplying that by three is still zero, which means we're not offsetting it by anything. And what we're doing is column integer divided by three. The column we're on is six, integer divided by three is two. So we are at grid box two, and we make the same checks. Six does not exist in row zero, six does not exist in column six, and six also does not exist in box two. So we're going to go ahead and add it in. Going back in this for loop, column is now seven. We're over here. This is a period. We move on. This is also a period. We move on out of the for loop. And there's nothing else for us to go through in our columns over here, which means we're going to be going in this bigger for loop to a new row. So we're now at row one over here and we restart our column loop. So we're at column index zero. So at index one zero, right, we have our number six. Number is not period, so we don't continue. What is our grid index? So our grid index is still zero, right? This makes sense. We're still at this first box and we make our checks again. Now this is a new row. So of course our row is going to be empty. Six doesn't exist in there. We are at column zero. Six has not existed over here as well. And in our grid, we also haven't seen six yet. So we're going to go ahead, add it in and go back in our for loop. So we're at this index now, one, one. The number in this cell is six. It's not a period, so we don't continue. Our grid index is going to remain zero. And we make a check if number in rows of row. So number is six, our row is one. What do we have at index one? We have a six. So since six already exists in our set, we're going to return false. We have seen repeats, right? We've seen a six here before. And if we had continued on, actually, we also would have noticed six also existed in this same grid before as well. So we're going to just output false. This is not a valid Sudoku. So we just went ahead and solved valid Sudoku. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.